My earliest memories are of gender dysphoria. I felt lost and at times like I couldn't survive. It took until I was 31 to publicly come out as a transgender woman. Nothing has been the same since. While on the road, I've met gender variant people from all walks of life, all at various points in their journeys. Hearing their stories and then being able to relate myself to it is what I need right now. I try to project a look of don't with me. I think a lot of that has to do with growing up in the punk scene. I mean, I've done that since I was a teenager, getting beat up all the time. Be it bad or good, if my back's against a wall, a fight. It's not easy to be trans anywhere. I've had to deal with a lot of negativity because being out there so much when there wasn't a lot of other people, especially female to male. Moving through public as a trans person is an inevitability of issues. Whether it's just, you know, someone intentionally trying to insult me or someone maybe even threatening my life or my health. It's either live afraid and completely uncomfortable and unhappy with myself or just go out there and do it and be me. <laughs> As I started transitioning, I didn't so much notice the way the people totally closest to me behaved. It was more like the loose acquaintances that their behavior changed, you know? I think it just makes some people nervous and uncomfortable. For me, I went through transition and I lived in the city and I didn't own a car, so I was on public transportation every day, having gone from like a bearded man to <laughs> a, a woman and every stage in between. I was on the L and there was a guy who had been staring for a while and finally approached me and he wanted to know if I was trans and he did it in a really kind of inappropriate way like he kind of leaned in and got too close and it was unsolicited. He missed his stop, followed me to my stop, then tried to follow me off of the platform and I finally had to, you know, stop him. But it, for me it was a microcosm of a larger issue which often results in violence. There's definitely a level of danger that I feel kind of constantly. There's always like that lingering sense of this may not be okay. How do you feel about like trans women are like somehow more like enraging to society oh, as opposed absolutely. to trans men oh, and totally. why that is. <clears throat> That's misogyny, huh? <laughs> That's just well, good right. old fashioned misogyny. <laughs> and someone who wants to be a man where there's this kind of sense of like, well, yeah, you'd want to be a man in this culture. I mean, like even when we talk about homophobia, you know, it's not masculine gay men who are the issue. Right, that's a good point, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so, I mean, trans women are incredibly threatening. Getting I mean, under it, spot and privilege. In the, in the, in it the calls the whole system into question. It calls the whole system into question. The threat of violence to trans women as opposed to trans men speaks a lot to male privilege. Prior to transitioning, I didn't realize what that extended to you and to how misogynist culture is. Let's talk about my male privilege now. I was a woman, and believe me, my eyes are the same eyes that see out of the body that was before. And when I walked into a room as a, as a dyke or a butch woman, whoa, people would react to me so horribly, say mean, nasty things, even physically violent against me. And now when I walk into a room as a man, it literally opens up to me. People forget trans women are giving that privilege up. It is interesting to watch privilege fall away. Privilege you didn't know you even had. Just in public spaces, the way people treat you or the way people look at you changes. Men are treated with a certain amount of respect in public space and women are often seen as objects that anyone else has access to. The trans part just adds another layer to it. My experience at this point really overlaps with any woman in public space. It's really a, a largely a feminist issue. I'm glad that I have the experience of being both. I feel like there's a lot of power in that that most women don't get. Nobody taught me to shame my body like most women are taught to shame their bodies. I was taught that I can have the privileges of a man, and I carry that with me. I think that the media is pretty misrepresentative of what it means to be trans. Historically, it's always been negative portrayals of trans people in the media. It's usually sensationalized, and it's like pretty misunderstood. Well, what Jen does with We Happy Trans is 
trying to showcase and highlight positive stories of transition, positive narratives with trans stories is really important work. We Happy Trans emerged out of a lack of positive representation of trans people online and in the media. I've been part of several websites about trans issues and trans people, and they were also negative and were part of the reason that I delayed my transition for so long. I didn't come out till I was 36. When I finally did and was so much happier, I thought, why aren't people talking about this part of it, like all, all that you gain from transition and how well it can go. People are changing their mindset just within the last year or two, and it's really amazing to see. The fact that we're sitting here talking is huge. That wouldn't have even happened two years ago. Someone like Laverne Cox on the cover of Time magazine. I could never have imagined that. I think the Rolling Stone article about Lauren Jane Grace was awesome. It's becoming progressively more understanding and more accurate to the trans experience. The more content we add to the media pile of trans lives, the more people are going to start seeing their stories. Portraying us fairly, accurately, and in a positive environment, you know, living happy lives, doing normal things, I think that would be the best way to fix most problems. My hopes are that you'll educate people to the point where they accept that there's people of all different types of gender variation, class, sexualities, whatever. For me, I don't want it to be the only thing about me as an artist. I don't want it to always be like, transgender performer, transgender singer. Just want to be a singer, you know? Or I just want to be in a band. I started asking myself, well, would I be happier if I were a woman? I realized that I wasn't wrong. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm a trans person. I'm not going to pretend to be someone I'm not any longer. You can classify someone as trans genderqueer, whatever you want, but when it comes down to it, they're just people.